Dark. Dead. Vengeance. Within the concrete jungle of high-rise buildings, the people hustled and bustled among the sleepless city lights. However, that was a long time ago. A darkness that shrouded the sky above turned the world into one that would never see morning come again. And with the darkness came monsters that threatened the peace of the city, the Vendreds. The Vendreds started as corpses that crawled out of their graves, except their bodies had transformed into something grotesque. Without a single shred of their memories from their past life or any will of their own, they would wander the streets at night and attack any living human or animal in their path, guided only by their instinct. No firearm, tank, or any sort of modern weaponry could defeat these creatures. What's worse, anyone in anything that was unfortunate enough to become a victim of a Vendred would become one themselves. The Vendred threat was like a match thrown into a forest, spreading fear like an uncontrollable blaze. As the undead continued to rapidly multiply, those remaining of flesh and blood scrambled fruitlessly for a solution. The Vendred Horde soon made their way to the hastily built wall that served as the sole line of defense for the living. Among them was a young man who had also lost his life to the undead. He was no different from the other Vendreds, wandering the same shrouded city with the same mindlessness. But, as luck would have it, one day, as the young man continued to drift about mindlessly, he came across a young woman who had been carried off by the Vendreds. His mind had already long faded, or it should have, but as his eye caught the locket that hung from the woman's neck, something stirred within him. Memories of his past life began to flood into his head in a great crashing wave. He knew the woman with the pendant before him. She had once been the love of his life. His mind twisted and turned with a desperate sadness as he realized that his love was no longer of this world. That sadness soon boiled over into a seething rage and hatred for the vengeance that robbed her of her life. As his mind dragged itself from the bogs of its undead depths, a flame of hatred ignited his heart. The violent burst of emotion tore his body apart with unbearable pain as it began to transform and rebuild itself into something much stronger. When the transformation ended, the man steadied his uneven breath and stood up. He took the locket and hung it around his neck so he could keep the memory of his beloved close by. Then, he spoke into the silent night. I swear! I will vanquish every last one of these walking corpses if it's the last thing I'll do! And thus, the new agent of vengeance was born. He was the Vendred who would hunt the other Vendred. Revendred Slayer. This was the beginning of the Lone Revenger's fierce battle. Even in that day, the living struggled bravely within the city wall to keep alive. The Vendred horde that pursued the living pushed against the barrier like crashing waves, and showed no sign of ever stopping. Their numbers seemed to only be going up, too. They continued to groan and wail deep into the night, day after day. The terror was too much. The citizens were finding it harder and harder to keep sane under these horrific circumstances. But then, a single shadow loomed over the horde. The shadow darted forth, and cut down a Vendred with a single swoop, quick as lightning. But he didn't stop there. Any Vendra that dare stand in his way would be stabbed, hit, kicked, and knocked down. They would have their limbs and rotting flesh torn, twisted, and ripped from their bodies. And once the Shadow had finished hunting down every last walking corpse that plagued the city wall, he disappeared back into the darkness as quickly as he had appeared, not even sparing a single moment to look back at the crowd he had just saved. <laughs> 
but the Revenge Red Slayer was not interested in being a hero. All he wanted was revenge, and he would not stop at anything to destroy any Vendred that entered his line of sight. But regardless of his intentions, the fact was that he had swooped onto the scene like a bolt from the blue and defeated all the Vendreds. To the survivors, he was their single ray of hope. Word of the mysterious undead hunter began to spread quickly through the city. As the nights continued, he too continued his battles. However, the Vendreds weren't going to stand for being hunted down so mercilessly. With the carnage, the undead began to change. Up until now, the humans and animals that turned into Vendreds had stayed about the same physical size as they had been when they passed. That was one of the main reasons the survivors had been able to keep the horde back with just their average human strength. However, now that the Vendreds were being pursued by a relentless executor in the form of a Vendred Slayer, they began to feel threatened. Some of them even began to merge with each other to create a bigger Vendred. Few words could describe how grotesque it looked, and people began to name it after a certain multi-headed beast of legend. They called it the Vendred Chimera. The creature would threaten the safety of the people beyond the wall for many more nights. It possessed the powers and strengths of numerous Vendreds, and even the Slayer was beginning to have trouble fighting it. Every time they battled, the Slayer would only just manage to fight it off. He was never successful in completely silencing it. However, the more they fought, the more weaknesses were uncovered. The Slayer found that within the Chimera, there lay a core that governed all its actions. The Slayer charged at the core and threw all his strength into it, destroying it. And finally, the Chimera crumbled into a pile of rotting flesh and bones. At first, it seemed that the Slayer's do-or-die attack had ended things once and for all with the agglomeration of animosity that was the Chimera, but the tragedy would only further unfold from here. The clash of the undead would only escalate further and further into something beyond human comprehension. All the survivors could do was pray that one day, the Vendred would be vanquished and dawn would break once more over their city. After a long and bitter struggle, Revendred Slayer would finally destroy the Vendred Chimera threat. No one could predict that this defeat would only bring more dreadful threats. One day, the Slayer felt a menacing presence like never before. Overflowing with an unabating grudge, he immediately headed toward it, determined to find the source. He saw that the wall had been broken through, even though it had held up well against the Chimera threat. The wall and the scavenged armored vehicles that were taking the brunt of the attacks were destroyed, and countless people were found slain. The Vendred Horde had a different leader now, and it was much larger than the Chimera had been, and was clad in heavy armor. Enveloping it was a thick and ominous aura of resentment. It was Vendred Battleworld and it had been born from the grudges of all the Vendreds that the Slayer had defeated. Their collective hunger for vengeance against the Slayer had combined into a frightening force, and wherever the Battlelord went, it would leave a trail of death and destruction behind. It was one lone fighter's wish to eradicate the Vendred against the Horde's desire to crush their executor. Their rage came to a head, and thus, Another clash to the death began. The Battle Lord's might was far more tremendous than the Slayer could have ever imagined. Not only could it absorb the surrounding Vendred, but also those who had lost their lives at the scene. The Battle Lord had a steady supply of fodder, and it only grew more powerful as time went on. No matter how strong the Slayer's desire for revenge was, his blade stood no chance against his foe. He pushed and tried everything he could to gain the upper hand, but in the end, he was overwhelmed by the Battle Lord's immense strength, 
Revenge Red Slayer lay limp on the ground, wounded and battered, like he was a ragdoll that had been flung aside. Vendred Battlelord picked up the small hunter in its enormous hand. Then, just as it had done to the other Vendreds and the fallen victims, it reached its other hand toward the Slayer's chest to absorb his powers. The Slayer's consciousness was sinking into nothingness fast, but then, the faint glint of the locket caught his eye. That tiny gleam was enough to remind him that his mission was not yet over. With his conviction renewed, the flame in his heart lit up once more. No wound on his body could stop him now. The Slayer mustered all the strength he had left, and right before the Battle Lord could absorb his powers, he plunged his hands into the Vendred's chest and ripped out its core. Holding the core, the Slayer began to feel a new surge of energy. His body was absorbing the hateful power that the Battle Lord had possessed. The tides were turning. With the Battle Lord's powers flowing into the Slayer now, its body started to crumble. However, just as the Slayer began to think that the fight was finally over, the core, struggling for survival, brushed against the Slayer's pendant with a stray hand. The Battle Lord's remains, along with the Vendreds that surrounded him, began to transform. They all began to take on the form of the woman that the Slayer cherished in his previous life. With that single touch of the locket, the Core had sensed the remaining dregs of the Slayer's love, and sought to destroy his morale with it. The Slayer froze. Was this a dream? This a dream. No, this no. was no dream. no dream. He shook his head trying to remind himself that the love of his life was already gone. This was a nightmare that was trying to ensnare him! He balled his fists in anger. How dare these scum disgrace the memory of his beloved. HOW DARE THESE SCUM DISGRACE THE MEMORY OF MY BELOVED! As his burning rage surged and finally exploded, he found himself transforming into a new form with stronger powers. He had become the Revenge Red Executor. Fueled only by his scorching hatred, Revendred Executor swooped through the horde and cut down the false figures of his beloved, one after another. He had been fighting his foe for days that could no longer be counted, all alone, and after absorbing Vendred Battlelord, his grudge only grew bigger with his Vendred powers. It was barely being kept in balance with his human heart. His mind and body had long been pushed past their limits. It was already a miracle that he was able to exist with both life and death in one vessel. It didn't matter anymore if what remained of his humanity faded, or if his body fell apart. Nothing could stop him now. All he had on his mind was to fight, and fight, and fight. He threw everything he had into this single desire. Then, at long last, the Vendred Horde moved no more. The battle had finally come to a close. The rays of the sun broke through the dark veil of the sky, illuminating the Slayer. Just how long had this war waged on for? The city survivors squinted, unaccustomed to the bright light. But oh, what a joyous sight it was! No one ever thought they would see the end of those eternal nights, but here the sun was in all its glory. The Slayer could feel his body fading with the light. He bent over to pick up the locket that had been taken from around his neck. All the Vendreds had been defeated, and the darkness that engulfed the city was gone. But at the end of the day, he too was a Vendred, and now it was his time to go. Now that the undead threat had passed with the Endless Knights, the survivors were able to return to their peaceful lives. However, the grief of losing so many lives left an unmendable hole in their hearts. A lot of survivors also developed a fear of the night and would be plagued by nightmares of the horrors they had faced. Unbeknownst to them, a single shadow watched over them from atop the glowing skyscrapers. Just like he had saved the city, 
the survivors had saved him. Although the Slayer had set out for revenge, he had still saved countless lives, and they all celebrated him as their hero. They were able to hold on to hope because of this lone fighter, and as the Slayer was slipping into the darkness on that fateful day, the survivors' kind hearts had pulled him back. Thus, he was able to remain in the mortal world without disappearing like the other Vendreds. If the world ever fell to darkness again, if monsters threatened the lives of the people again, he would surely swing his blade for them once more, but this time without the resentment he once harbored in his heart. If that time ever came, he would fight not for vengeance, but for peace, and to give the people courage and hope when they needed it.